We've used a bunch of budget camera monitors, mainly 7 inch monitors, but there are times when a 7 inch monitor attached to your camera is just too bulky. The guys over at Andy Cine have sent us their 5.7 inch monitor to test out. Now let's see if 5.7 inches is the Goldilocks size we've always been looking for. Welcome to the film. Give your videos a clean look with Aspect by Rocketstock. It features over 200 logo reveals, intros, lower thirds, overlays, icons and transitions. Get it now by clicking the link below. Build quality. The Andy Cine A6 field monitor has a tough plastic construction. Don't expect this to survive too many drops, but on the bright side, it's really lightweight, which is great for smaller rig setups. In the twist test, it does a good job with hardly any flex. The included articulating arm is a full metal construction and is very smooth when changing the angle. It's not perfect. There is a bit of play when you slack off the monitor, but once you tighten it back up, it's going nowhere. It also comes with a cold shoe mount for adding a small onboard microphone. It features eight buttons on the top for on off, navigating menus, and some act as function buttons, which you can set from a list of features. More on features soon. The monitor includes quarter 20 threading on the top and bottom, as well as the right hand side. So you can attach the monitor in a hanging position and a standing position with something like a magic arm, if you prefer. This magic arm is not included, but I have added a link in the description below. I.O. The monitor features HDMI input with support of up to 4K UHD recording. It has DC 12 volt input for power from a wall socket and even includes a DC output of 8 volts. So with the correct DC coupler and a dummy battery, you can power your camera with the battery from the monitor. It includes a port for a USB upgrade for firmware updates and even has a headphone jack. Just don't expect to use this as live monitoring for your audio. The distance is just slightly too late for it to be comfortable, but for playback, it's just fine. The screen. The best thing about this monitor is the screen. The resolution is a solid 1920 by 1200, which will give you a full 1080p at 5.7 inches, which means the monitor is really sharp. Great for nailing focus, even without zooming in to double check. The screen is bright and the color accuracy is much better than most budget monitors. Everything looks like it should out of the box. It's not winning color accuracy awards, but white is white, black is black, and skin certainly isn't green. Latency. This isn't the fastest monitor in terms of latency, but it's certainly not the slowest. There is a slight delay as you would expect from a budget monitor, but honestly, once you get the monitor on the camera and begin shooting with it, you forget about the latency and it really doesn't affect shooting all that much. Software features. For a full list, check out the link in the description below. As for the ones I think are useful, here it goes. It includes Image Flip, which is a great addition if you're using the articulating arm. Simply program Image Flip to a function button and you can hot swap to a tilted view. This monitor includes false color for managing exposure and lighting ratios, which is a great plus for aspiring cinematographers. It has an on-screen histogram, a three-step zoom feature up to 16x, and all of the display markers you will need, including center markers, aspect ratios, and save frames. This monitor also includes zebras for monitoring overexposure, and it even has a battery gauge. Power. The monitor can be plugged into the wall with a DC 12 volt plug, sold separately, but I'll put a link down below if you want to buy one. It also takes the Sony NPF batteries, which is a massive plus. We use Sony MPF batteries for pretty much every battery powered device we have, so kudos to Andy Cine for using a common power device. Again, sold separately, but I've put a link down below if you want to buy some. Accessories. The Andy Cine A6 comes with a few accessories. The articulating arm is a huge plus in my eyes. You also get an HDMI to mini HDMI cable. It includes a sunshade which velcros on, super lightweight and really handy, and the whole package comes with a reasonably tough shelled zip bag. So who is this monitor for? Firstly, you've got vloggers and self-shooters. Because of the way it's designed with the easy flip screen and function buttons, it's a great tool to frame yourself up and check focus. Then you've got camera operators, especially those on the DIY and independent level. The monitor is cheap, does the job, it's lightweight, and it's a brilliant stepping stone to something a bit more expensive down the line. Price. It's currently priced at 180 pounds and 180 US dollars. It's a bit more expensive than some other monitors we've used, like the Fieldworld 759 and the Pergia A7S, but I'd have to say it's totally worth the money. It has a fantastic screen, some great functions for exposure and framing, and I prefer the size to something like a bulky 7-inch monitor. All in all, this is a great budget 5.7-inch monitor, and if you squint hard enough, it almost looks like a small HD focus. 
And if you like this video, consider subscribing. We make videos every week helping us all get closer to achieving the film look, including reviews just like this one. If you like the motion titles in this video, check out Rocket Stock's Aspect Pack. It has 200 minimalist graphic elements and transitions designed to get your films and videos a sleek professional touch. Check it out by clicking the link below or head over to rocketstock.com. Thanks for watching another episode of The Film Look and remember to achieve it one shot at a time.